Sun. Well, video evidence can prove conclusive. But on this occasion, City cannot dwell on the pass. They were well merit for the 0-0 draw at half-time. They could have gone in 1-0 up. But that's something that Dan Greenside cannot look back to and cannot dwell on. Second half, ready to get underway here at St James Park. There's one sub for West Ham United, and that is actually a goalkeeper sub. Christian Heggie has been replaced by Brian Kinnear. Uh, Brian Kinnear turned 21 uh, two days ago, actually. Uh, Scotland and 21 international from the Rangers Academy. He's part of Gerrard's Europa League squad at Rangers before he signed for the Iron. And now it's his chance to play at St James Park. West Ham get us underway then. Kicking from right to left and there's already a loose ball there by Equa. And already a chance for City to put the pressure on early and build on the build on the momentum that they gained at the end of the half. Maybe half time came a little bit too soon for Dan Green's men. It's a chance for those senior players to step up and those young players to really express themselves. Jack Sparks looking to break the line and he's beaten Ashby to the ball. But he hasn't beaten Lang. Sparks held it up well and just as Colin Daniel went for the overlap, wins himself a throw in. We see we saw the Grecians, they they made the most mistakes inside the first five minutes of the match, but West Ham made the first in the second half. So whether the Exeter players can keep doing that and make for, making their opponents uh, make mistakes, uh, that'll only be a sign of good things to come. Sparks tries to deliver the ball into the box, but Exeter City just about stopped and Jack Veal looks to put the pressure on. And he was all the way back to Elise in defence. Good work by Forza in midfield. This is Armstrong Oko Flex trying to cut inside into his right foot into Odebeku. Beautiful little back heel. Odebeku just couldn't find Oko Flex. Back out to Fevrier. West Ham looking to start the second half well. Fevrier gets into the box and Alice Johnson sweeps it away and gets it away. Yeah, what the Hammers have, they've got inverted wingers, if you like, so they're always trying to cut in whether they can bend a shot towards goal or, or put in a dangerous ball. That's what they're looking to do. Sandy Cox trying to cause a nuisance up there. Everywhere on the ball. Mark Robson said there's a good chance for West Ham to bounce back after their one all draw with Arsenal. Normally a one all draw with Arsenal sounds quite good, but after you've beaten them 6-0 at the start of the season, you might feel that it was a bit of disappointment from the Hammers. Yeah, I think they even took the lead in that game. It, they, they will feel that that was two points dropped, if you like. I think I read that it was a, a game that was very stretched and open at both ends, but they'll be looking to bounce back tonight. Sonny Cox again, trying to use his presence to cause West Ham issues. It was a bit clumsy there by Carl Taylor, and it's a free kick to West Ham. Well, the Grecians finished the first half well and they've started the second in almost similar vein to how they were finishing it. It's important that they keep up this this pace and this momentum as well. Yeah, it's important to really get on the front foot. Uh, they might not have as much ball as they like, but they play in a Premier League sort of academy outfit here. So um, it's important to be positive with the ball, really try and get forward when they can, but just not really make the mistakes that they, they did at times in that first half. Alfie Pond wins the header. Almost bounces through for Carl Taylor. Nodded down again and West Ham looks so calm in possession. Lovely turn in midfield and a ball down the line. Easy for Harry Lee on this occasion. Keenan Apaya Forson with the little swivel in midfield. I think you mentioned it about the change of system in that first half. It really sort of, uh, sort of kick-started uh, the Grecians into playing better football and they've continued that uh, with the start of the second half. Beautiful turn. It's a decent-looking ball through as well by Kamarai Swire. Just not on the same wavelength as Thierry Neves. But again, 
that piercing ball from West Ham could be the doing for Exeter City this evening if they're not on their toes at all times. Colin, Carl, Danu, Carl Taylor not on his toes at that occasion. And West Ham again get the ball back. Good pressing though by City. Yeah, that, that was a real sort of um, highlight from that first half. The, the pressing intensity um, really caused West Ham problems at times. If they can sort of continue that, they might get a little tired if they haven't got the ball as much, but if they can do that as much as they can, uh, that will give them the best hope in, in getting up the pitch. Ellis Johnson aware of his surroundings and drawing the foul from arms from Oko Flex. Really good chance for Ellis Johnson tonight. He's not phased. In fact, he said that he doesn't feel any pressure in the situation, given the fact that he need two wins from their last two games. Sonny Cox wins the header, flicks it on for Jack Sparks. That's another high boot, similar to the non-foul in the penalty box on the edge of half-time. And Josh Coley, a little bit silly, and giving away the free kick. Yeah, I think uh, what Ellis was alluding to is the fact that they're playing a Premier League outfit here, so more of the pressure is on them, especially if they want to get through. A win guarantees them to go through West Ham tonight. A draw pretty much does that. The Grecians need a victory if they want to continue their journey in the, co in the competition, but we'll see uh, how this pans out. Here is Johnson. Looks up, looks over the top for Veal. It's a beautiful ball. Veal tries to get it under control, but... Elise is there and across to get it away. West Ham calm, composed, get it clear. Jordan Dyer sweeps up at the back and wins himself a throw in for City. Ben Seymour getting readied. Yeah, I think this is a sign of intention from Dan Green here. Um, the experience of Ben Seymour, I say that even though he's still a young age, um, he scored on Friday. Um, this is a real chance to, to add to his goal tally for the season. Uh, we'll see who he's coming on for. Uh, in fact, it is Sonny Cox coming off. He's had a bit of a difficult day, Sonny Cox. He's been against two physical centre-halves, um, considering the young age that he is. It, it's just been another sort of uh, chance for him to learn develop his game. But Ben Seymour will really um, try and take the fight to, to those two West Ham centre-backs now. Well, it's like for like. And, but Ben has looked bright since coming back from his loan from Yeovil. He had nice cameos against Forest Green Rovers and Port. And of course, he started against Portsmouth as well. Had a big chance to score in that game. Can he make amends tonight? Yeah, if, if he can go into this game with confidence off the back of his goal from Friday, he missed a few in the, in the game, but he managed to get the goal that he probably merited on the day thanks to his efforts. But, um, you know, he'll be hoping to, to bag another and um, get the win that, that Dan Green and his team want. Chance for City to send it forward to him immediately. Ellis Johnson... Cut inside, little shows too much of it to Oko Flex. Dyer hooks towards Coley, manages to stay on side. Veal tries to peel, peel again. Coley, good feet work, good footwork. Little give and go with Veal and Johnson. This is good football from City. Two in the middle to aim for, including Jack Sparks at the far post. Just a little bit overhit by Johnson, but that is the quality that City can possess. Yeah, that was reminiscent of their academy days when they used to link up down the right-hand side. If they can keep doing that, that, that's definitely an avenue where they can, can get Ellis Johnson forward and put some balls into dangerous areas. That's the voice of Derek Baker who's been covering the City youngsters ever since Matt Grimes' days. No better man clued up on the City youngsters tonight. Callum Rowe a little bit week in the challenge air and it allows Swire to swag his way into the city half and pick out Thierry Neves he hit the crossbar in the first half and this shot is blocked in the second but immediately West Ham trying to get on the front foot again yeah the Grecians were a little bit short in numbers there thankfully they did enough to uh, put the ball out in behind uh, behind and uh, give West Ham a corner um, they'll be hoping to stay solid here and um, make sure that they don't concede Almost 10 minutes gone in the second half. It's as you were. Both teams creating chances for each other, but no one's been able to break through. Can Jaden Fevrier deliver the cross that can put West Ham United ahead? 
everybody but two inside the Exeter City box and referee Elliot Swallow who is not a popular man around St James Park at the moment is just making sure that everything is to his liking. Fevrier with the in-swinger. It's deep, Oko flexes the nearest West Ham head to it. But it's Alfie Bond that can only head it to the West Ham winger. Lovely feet by Oko Flex into the box, goes for goal. And there's Pond again to pick up the pieces. There you go, he's trying to look and cut inside once again. He's, he's beat his, the initial sort of tackle, found himself into, inside the penalty area, but only can fire a shot into Alfie Pond. It's good defending in the end. Short corner from West Ham. Here's Ashby, can he deliver across with his right foot? In fact, to go all the way back to Jaden Fevrier. Oko Flex again. Won the corner in the first place. Can he deliver a decent ball? It's low. It's easy for Carl Taylor to get to. And City will work it clear. Brilliant work from Ellis Johnson. Ben Seymour, man through the back. And Jaden Fevrier, fair challenge. And that's the sort of physicality that City need to respond with. Yeah, if they can sort of go toe-to-toe -to -toe with West Ham, then... You know, they'll be expecting that West Ham will bring that sort of intensity and physicality to the to the game and, and they've just really just got to give give it back to them really. Ben Seymour trying to win the header, that's what he does well. Jack Veal not quite getting on the end of it. Chance for Coley to spread it wide to Daniel. Now City with five in advance. Can Daniel deliver the cross? He'll pick out Taylor on the edge. Might still fall here to Coley. Shift it onto his right foot. Veal on the right hand side of the box. Looking for the overlap, doesn't need it. Can he deliver now? Just about and squeezes towards the near post. And the new man, Kinnear, has been able to force it wide. They're looking far more bright and positive in this second period, it must be said. The Grecians really getting the numbers forward, as you've alluded to just then, and um, really giving themselves options um, when they get into sort of the, the advanced places on the pitch. Positive from City's ascend men forward, but it'll be the outswinger by Josh Coley. Pond scored a header against Wolves. He'll be the target. But no one's the target for that. It didn't even come in. And it's frustration for Exeter because those are the moments where they need to make the most of. Yeah, they pride themselves on set pieces sort of throughout the academy and um, that will be one that will frustrate Dan Green and his coaching staff. West Ham comfortable to play it along the back line. And back to the new goalkeeper. It's interesting making a goalkeeper sub in, in normal time, isn't it, Derek? Yeah, uh, whether he's sort of up to, up to speed with the game, whether he's properly warmed up, because they know he's going to be tested in, in what is cold conditions as well. So whether he's up to the task, we'll have to wait and see. He's done everything that's been asked of him so far. But um, as you say, it, it's an interesting choice to swap them. Um, whether they've got their eyes on other competitions in the near future, I don't know. The scattering of West Ham fans are singing I'm forever blowing bubbles, but at the moment, Exeter City have burst it. But can West Ham come forward again towards Neves? This is Swire, turns away from Coley. That's a hefty challenge there by Jack Veal. It's one that he probably shouldn't have weighed. And it's nice and central and a chance for West Ham to have a shot on goal. Yeah, this, this is a great opportunity. Um, you'd expect them to go direct from the free kick to really test Harry Lee. Um, they've already rattled the bar, haven't they, uh, in the first half. That was a tremendous effort. But um, this will be another chance to, to really put an assault on Harry Lee's goal. Looks like Jack Veal is going to have his name put into the book. That'll be the second City man in there after Jordan Dyer. Happy Pond, I should say. <laughs> Maybe could have been the third if Sparks was a judge to have dived. Well, when the Grecians don't have as much of the ball as West Ham do, that you've got to expect that they will make more fouls, more tackles, uh, uh, and they'll have you know, uh, more of a chance if you like to go in the referee's book. It's unfortunate that Jack Veal was in there uh, just now. Well, it's the two fullbacks that are lining this one up and 
Well, you look down the years of fullbacks taking free kicks. It looks like it's going to be Fevrier. He'll run over it. Ashby hits it. Deflection. Goal. He shakes his head. He wasn't happy with the connection, but he'll be happy with the results. West Ham United are 1-0 up here. A fortunate flick off the wall. And City, unlucky to be 1-0 down, will send on the cavalry now with Nigel Atangana. But West Ham United, probably deserved leaders, but not in that fashion. I think Harry Lee will uh, come away disappointed. It, it might have taken that nick, but it's still gone centre of the goal. So Harry Lee's almost dived past the ball um, and unfortunately the ball's ended up in his net. Ashby obviously uh, scoring his second goal against Exeter this season after the scoring in the reverse fixture back in October. Um, he scores again, uh, the Scottish under-21 international. He made his full Premier League debut against Arsenal in December. He was even he was booked last week against Leeds United, but he'll score tonight. It was a good set-piece routine. Fevrier with the dummy, Ashby with the hit. It's a chance for City to respond and respond immediately. Ben Seymour looking to cause problems, but Brian Kinnear, very equal to that. Yeah, it's interesting they've brought Nigel Atangana on now, whether um, they're just looking to shore up that midfield, uh, sort of centre midfield channel. Um, we shall wait and see. He's just sort of trying to cut those passing lanes out, if you like. Um, and if he can sort of build on his fitness as well, I'm sure he'll uh, enter Matt, Matt Taylor's thoughts as well. Alton Garner's last game was in November against Oldham Athletic. He'll be looking to build some minutes on the ball now. Scored against Crawley as well this season. It's been an integral part of Matt Taylor's side in the last couple of years. But he's right in the thick of it already. He's already linking play up with the two centre-halves there and he's been asked to cover a lot of ground already just to try and you know restrict the West Ham build-up play. Last time he played in the Premier League Cup, he was 31 years old against Aston Villa. A couple of years ago, Marcus Flitcroft, the head of recruitment at Exeter City, was telling me that he was fielding some calls about who is this youngster in the Exeter City midfield. Turned out to be Nigel Atankana. He's got a great beard for an 18-year-old. <laughs> Maybe uh, he's got that much of a baby face. West Ham with the throw with Fevrier. Josh Coley, little chest and can only divert it into touch. City just need to calm their heads, get composed, get on the ball. That's what they were doing well at the end of the first half, well at the start of this second half. It's a bit of a sucker punch, that goal. Yeah, if you look at how the first half evolved, if you like, um, West Ham started on top, but, but the Grecians, they grew into it because they became more positive and better on the ball. And that's what they need to do now. Make sure they don't go two goals down. Uh, that's, you know, the most important thing, but really sort of get on the ball and settle down. The point still would not be enough for Exeter City. As things stand, West Ham go level on points with Wolves at the top of the group. Moving eight points clear of City with just the game to play. Ben Seymour judged to be offside there. It's a little bit frustrating because City done well to put the pressure on the West Ham defence and win the ball high up the pitch. Yeah, that that, that is certainly something that that has uh, been done well by by the Exeter players so far is really pressuring the West Ham sort of back line into uh, mistakes and trying to win that ball higher up, if you like. Here's the skipper, Elisa. Coming forward into Armstrong Oko Flex. He's caused problems all evening. He has, but that's that's probably the deepest I've seen him, but he's trying to get involved again. Looking for a switch. Harry Lee is just slightly out of position. If that was on target, that could have been troublesome. As it is, it is wide and Exeter City can just find their shape, get themselves on the ball again, look to the players like Atten Garner and Colin Daniel who've been there and done it over so many years to try and drag themselves back into the game. Mm. 
And those players themselves will be looking for a performance whilst travelling to Walsall next week on Saturday with the senior side. There's always chances for anyone in this Exeter City squad. Yeah, you just have to look at sort of how Czech Diabato has become an integral sort of part of Matt Taylor's team in recent weeks. I mean, Matt Taylor had to play Harry Kite at centre-back sort of during one game, but now Diabato's come back in, come back from his loan spell, uh, become an important part of that team, played really well recently. Jack Sparks coming forward. He's got Seymour to aim for. It's deep and Coley will get there. Not towards, not before the bounce though. Can he keep things alive? Here's Johnson with support. Atangana, can he play a meaningful pass into Johnson tries to play it through the legs of Oko Flex and now that might have just put the pressure on City as West Ham come forward little give and go Armstrong Oko Flex can he cut inside onto his stronger right foot Ellis Johnson can't quite get close to him still Oko Flex now Swire he goes for goal brilliant curling effort and that's not far away yeah Ellis Johnson I think he, he's, he's more of a fan going forward, so when he's tracking back, trying to, trying to win the ball in his defensive third, that, that, that's not his kind of game. But he's, he's done well to force him inside, but um, you know, it, it leads to a shot that's just gone wide of Harry Lee's goal. But, but ultimately, you know, the Hammers are still looking threatening. Oko Flex is West Ham's top scorer of the season with 12 goals. Will always be causing a danger, even from that wing. Sparks a target, few calls for handball, but nothing given. Odebeku inside to Swire. Odebeku's gone again, but Jordan Dyer reads it well. The Hammers are in a really good position then. It was 4v4 at one point there. And if the pass was better, then the next Exeter were in trouble. Um, fortunately, Jordan Dyer was there on the cover. It's good defending from the centre half. Atangana with a little flick out to Colin Daniel. It just trips over his own feet. A few more groans. But it's moments like these that just need to keep you calm. Carl Taylor looks to burst away. That's a lovely little touch by Harrison Ashby, the goal scorer. Kept that under control well. City putting the pressure on. Josh Coley winning the ball up inside the Hammers half. Jack Sparks is overlapping Carl Taylor. Will he be found? Here is Sparks, left footed across Ooh. goal. Ben Seymour was just caught on his heels and he could have tapped that in at the far post if he was anticipating it further. That, that, that's their best sort of move of the game. Uh, it's a really good sort of break after a really good press high. That, that, that's what that can lead to. Jack Sparks is on the overlap on the left-hand side. And what a dangerous ball that is. Ben Seymour just needs to be a little bit more lively and um, active at the back post to, to tuck that away. Really good opportunity for Seymour to build on the goal that he scored against Swansea on Friday. Whether Sparks gave him enough of a ball to chase as well is... The question also to be asked. It was a shot by Jack Sparks. But you just feel it's those little moments again the City just need to take to find themselves back in the game and, and back in the tournament. Yeah, but, you know, sort of Green's men will, will sort of believe now because that, that, that will sort of just give them a bit of confidence that, that they can cause those kind of problems especially when they press high force West Ham into mistakes because they've got the players that, that can create those opportunities here is Seymour trying to squeeze away from a couple of West Ham players does well so does Callum Rowe who squeezes away and he's just been rugby tackled to the ground in fact he's still holding his leg and Elise will go into the book We've talked about cricket today. It's our first talk about rugby. I think that's the definition of a professional foul. Lisa only turned 21 yesterday. He had his full West Ham United debut last season against Hull. Played 90 minutes against Dynamo Zagreb in the Europa League just a couple of weeks ago as well. And now he's here in Devon on a cold evening but in the book these games are just as important to him as those full senior games as well captaining his side tonight now 
what can City produce from this free kick? Sparks and Taylor over the, over the ball. It will be Sparks. It's decent towards the box. Atangana was the target. Headed away by Swire. West Ham just about regroup. Callum Rowe into At by Pia Forsen. And calm again by West Ham United. Yeah, West Ham, they sort of dealt with that set piece well. Jack Sparks, I think he just needed a little bit more air time on his delivery. Um, just couldn't get that right. Oko Flex trying to break the line again. Flag has stayed down momentarily. Fevrier was, Nevers was busting a gut to get into the middle. Oko Flex again cuts onto his right foot. Little step over. Still two City fans. Manages to squeeze a shot in and Harry Lee gets down well. Yeah, they can be a difficult one for a goalkeeper, but he's done well to react and, and get down low, as you say. That was sneaking in, in off the post, I think. 20 minutes to go. Better from Harry Lee to get down to that. It was difficult for him to react to the free kick, but that is the goal that separates the two sides here tonight. Yeah, there was a goal difference in between the two sides. It was 3-2 back in October, and it's a goal that separates them here. But if the Grecians can string a few more passes together, send a few men more forward, they might find an equaliser and kick on from there. Interesting to see that Exeter City are still adopting this lone striker up front. It didn't really help Sonny Cox earlier. Here's Oko Flex on the left-hand side. Supported by Equa. Nigel Atangana barking orders at his colleagues as City try to push West Ham back into their own half. Elise, little give and go. Keeps the ball in. Oko Flex. Coley probably had a bit more time than he thought. Ben Seymour wins the header, but Jaden Fevrier can play it back to his keeper, Brian Kinnear. Yeah, even with Elise out of position there, Seymour was just isolated. There was no one around him, so he couldn't link up play when the long ball came forward. Alfie Pond just got dragged out there momentarily, and it might allow West Ham to get in behind. It's a nice ball in for Odebeku onto his left foot, and there was Daniel to come across and clear the danger. Yeah, you feel this game could be a little bit more stretched now, and you just saw it there, a long ball. And suddenly West Ham were in the final third. A uh, good defender from Colin Daniel means that it's a hammer's corner. West Ham happy to send a few, a few men back compared to what they were doing earlier on in the game. Now they've got that one goal lead to hang on to. City still with every man inside the area. No outlet to play it out if they want to break. But they've got to defend the corner first. Ashby in swinging. Not his best delivery. And it will only be a goal kick for City. Yeah, I think West Ham are going to make a change. I think that's Dan Chester's uh, making his final preparations. Looking to come on. And I think West Ham will be looking to, to see the game out. Chester's out. Scored in the 4-3 win over Tottenham Hotspur back in October. Comes on to replace the fantastic Kamarai Swire. How, how have you been impressed with the performance today? Yeah, he, he links up play, the, the midfield to the attack, if you like. Um, obviously scored in the, in the first game between the two sides. Didn't I don't think he, he sort of posed that goal threat here, but, but he certainly sort of linked the player and, and made West Ham look dangerous. Um, going back to uh, Dan Chester, be interested to see where he plays. He, he, he's usually in midfield, but he has played at fullback this season. So it's whether West Ham are going a bit more defensively with time running out. Daniel looking over the top for Seymour. The flag is up very early on this occasion. It was good to see that City were quick to make their decisions in the first half. You felt that they could have played the ball into the front men a bit sooner. Seymour, a little bit over eager to get to that ball, but good intent by the Grecians. West Ham themselves go long. Here's Neves around the back. There's so much space for Harrison Ashby on the far side. Neves might not even need him. He goes for goal himself, and that's not far away himself. And that's the threat he poses. We've seen it already during this game, and uh, that's just his latest shot in, in what has been a sort of flurry of efforts from him this game. I think Ben Seymour's coming across for some instructions from Dan Green. 
this West Ham United front line. Bags full of goals this season. And you can see why they're so fluent in the way that they cross each other and they know where each other are at all times. Well, I mean, they've, they've played 16 games in the Premier League to, to sort of um, reserve league and they're not top by any fluke. Um, and you see the fluency, as you say, in their play and, and how they're sort of creating these opportunities with their overloads in wide areas, their, their quick passing in midfield. And, um, you know, the Grecians have done well to, to restrict it to one, but, you know, they'll be looking to, to try and get themselves back into the contest. Alfie Pond, time on the ball. Now, can he bring the ball forward? He's a good passer and he looks for Josh Coley over the top. Brought down half OK by the number 31. Colin Daniel is trying to get forward and Josh Coley goes down and the referee isn't interested. Now can West Ham United break themselves? Odubeku has tried to peel away, but Oko Flex will still maraud forward. In fact, there's three red shirts around him and none of them are stopping him. And he's given it to Odubeku. He's picked it up again. What a run this is from Oko Flex. And he does the business. Excellent work from the West Ham United top scorer this season. Little give and go with Odubeku. Too easy. And West Ham United lead 2-0 and have one foot in the next round. Yeah, the Grecians needed to be aware of that counter-attack. And Oko Flex, is, he's coming off that right-hand side, given a, a good one-two uh, with the centre-forward. Uh, and he's rounded it off nicely with a, a nice play shot into the bottom corner. He signed on a two-year deal from Celtic back in June. Fantastic prospect as are most of these West Ham players. But Oko flexes. Well, pardon the pun, he's flexing himself. <laughs> well, you mentioned uh, sort of the different sports, and now it suddenly became a basketball game. There was suddenly uh, a massive sort of space between attack and defence, and, and West Ham made the most of the lack of Grecian defenders, if you like. They've, they've given sort of a quick give and go, um, which meant Oko flex was in the clear, and uh, he's finished coolly uh, past Harry Lee. It was a wonderful 40-yard run, and that's the quality that Exeter City strive to be like. They've got 15 minutes now to try and find themselves a, back into, a way back into this game. They haven't been short of opportunities, the Grecians. You feel they've just got the heart to be able to continue that. They have done for most of this competition so far. But it's incredible looking increasingly unlikely that they'll be playing for anything more than pride against Wolves on Valentine's Day. I think the City fans are just hoping that they can sort of bring that quality back into the attack in third. They've looked promising in spells and, um, you know, when Jack Sparks crossed for, for Ben Seymour earlier on, that was their brightest moment. So I think if they can get a goal, you know, that will at least sort of please the, the, the Exeter supporters tonight. Van Green always says that Moments like these are a fantastic opportunity to, for fans to see the stars of the future. We reiterate it almost every time there's a game at St James Park. But you can see where he's coming from. It's a good chance for Exeter City fans to see the likes of Alfie Pond, Ellis Johnson, to get themselves into the side in the next couple of years. Yeah, they've competed well. Let, let, let's not forget that. Atangan has missed the slide tackle. And Ashby is out on that right-hand side. Can it be three here for West Ham United? Just holds it up momentarily and he'll play it all the way back. And you can see that West Ham United are very, very happy, very content with their lead at the moment. But Ashby has snuck through again. It's a lovely little back into the middle. Odebeku gets a shot away. It might still fall for Armstrong Flex. Armstrong Oko Flex. But again, it's a little bit simple for West Ham United to get round the back. And City just need the players like Jack Sparks to to try and get a grip on the game but at the moment it's just so difficult for them. There's such a difference in ball retention right now. West Ham are sort of playing it around um, you know, comfortable in possession and their transitions from defence to attack are, are seamless and, and the Grecians really failing the, to, to really get a hold of the, the ball and, and sort of just get a foothold in the game at the minute. Well, he hasn't played for two months, but Nigel Atangana hasn't quite made the same impact that I think he would have been hoping for since coming on. He looks to be playing in a bit more of an advanced position now. He's closing down Elisa on the ball, but 
Now it's just a case of getting those minutes into your legs. Final 10 minutes, what do you want to see from the next 10 minutes, Derek? Uh, well, uh, a sort of, I don't want to say a continuation because they're, they're two goals down, but, but they've got to do the basics right and, and continue trying to play their way. They, they've shown that they can sort of break down this West Ham defence and they've been unlucky not to, to really test the goalkeepers more than, than they have done. Uh, I think I've seen Gabe Billington stripping off and, and getting ready to come on. Um, so that'll be another youngster on the pitch, which will be good to see. Meanwhile, it was good work from Callum Rowe to win the free kick for City. Another chance for him to put the ball into the box where maybe the deliveries have not quite been at the same quality. But again, Taylor and Sparks are the ones that are most interested in this. Yeah, they've got to really make sure that they can get the likes of Jordan Dyer, Alfie Pond on the end of these, these sort of crosses because, um, you know, set pieces are an important part of the, of the modern game. Taylor into the middle brilliant effort good chance oh it's just wide it's Alfie Pond wonderful delivery by Kyle Taylor Pond got on the end of it and his volley oh it looked all for the world it was nestling in the corner but it's just snuck wide what a great chance uh, maybe you don't want a centre off uh, or have the centre off be the one that, that's volleying towards goal but he got himself in that moment um, and he was unlucky not to score Exeter City have made that substitution. It is Josh Curley to be replaced by Gabe Billington. Derek, what, what does Gabe bring to the side? Uh, he's a fantastic centre midfield player. Um, he's, he's been asked to play at the back at times as well this season, but he's very composed on the ball, plays with, with two feet and um, one to really look out for in the future because it, he, he plays with a mature head, if you like, for, for only a, a first-year scholar and um, he's become an integral sort of part of Chad Gribble's, uh, Chad Gribble's side. It's predominantly a centre mid, but it looks like he's pushed out to right wing for the last 10 minutes. Wearing the number eight, because he's not got a senior squad number. You might be mentioning the, the 41s and the 25s on the pitch, but Gabe Billington's still not part of the senior setup yet, so is wearing his traditional number eight, which he wears for the under-18s. Yeah, so certainly one to look and uh, keep an eye on, if you like, though, uh, in the future. Chance of West Ham to come over the halfway line. Here goes Ekwa. Oko Flex tried to spin in behind. Looks like Dan Chester has changed the game since he's come on. Yeah, he, he's just added a little bit of quality. Um, and, and just making sure that West Ham get over the line and even possibly add to their goal tally. And it's Chester who spreads it wide to Ashby. And just goes back to Apaya Forson. Elise. Space here for Fevrier. Can he deliver? In fact, he'll cut inside. He might still be able to shimmy away, but Harry Lee takes control of the situation. He looked to go early for Ben Seymour, but Ben Seymour is so isolated up there, he just hasn't got any support around him. Yeah, I think even if... Uh, Harry Lee kicked it long and Ben Seymour would sort of get on the end of it then they'd have to hold up play wait for his midfield to catch up it and then sort of wait until the, the numbers got to him so it's a good decision in the end Seymour does win the flick on but it goes all the way through to the substitute goalkeeper Do you think Dan Grew will be happy with his side's performance today, g given that they're playing against a team that are top of Premier League two? Um, to, to be fair, that I think there's pros and cons to this performance. You know, that they, they, they have tried to, to go toe to toe with what is a talented outfit. It, it must be said, um, but ultimately, you know, West Ham have showed their quality. So Dan Green can't be too disheartened. But there are basics that they've done wrong too. Oko okay, Flex looking in the middle toward Abeku. The flag has stayed down. And that was an opportunity for West Ham to extend their lead. It was good work again by Chesters just to spread the ball out wide. Oko flex with an early ball into the middle. And Odubeku 
not getting a toe onto it, but he might be able to cause problems here. Chester's picked it up, one man on the outside of him. Here's the chance of West Ham to make it three. Game, set and match. I think it, it, it's come from another Exeter mistake, hasn't it? And, and then they had an overload on the right-hand side. They've made the most of that, and it's a tidy finish past Harry Lee. And uh, they're the creators of their own downfall there. Thierry Neves. I said earlier that he scored against Arsenal, Man United and Liverpool. He can add Exeter City to that list as well. It's not a bad list, is it? <laughs> he has been drifting since the right wing. He's usually on the left, but... On the right tonight, he's been causing problems all day, as has Oko Flex on this left-hand side, and he's got his just reward. Yeah, the, the full-backs of, of Thoraxa have, have really had their um, been, been tested tonight, if you like. Ellis Johnson uh, on at right back has been tested by Oko Flex. He's got his goal, hasn't he? And now on the other side, even a senior sort of pro like Colin Daniel has has been tested throughout this game, and, and, and then sort of his opposite man has netted as well. So um, you know that's where they've really threatened, uh, and they both have got a deserved goal. Neves, tenth goal of the season. A wonderful campaign he's having in Premier League too and the Premier League Cup. It's damage limitation for Exeter City. We're just saying that they can be proud of their performance. It's, there's no tougher side that they could have played at this stage of the competition. But for the younger players, this, this is a real good experience to, to learn from and, and develop their games from, really. Uh, you know, we've alluded to it that West Ham are one of the best sort of in the country in the under-23 setup, And, um, you know, they can take plenty of pride from their performance, but take plenty of learning opportunities from it, too. It's important that they don't just see West Ham or just let West Ham see out the remaining couple of minutes. They need to still show a little bit of fight, which they might do here through Callum Rowe. Gabe Billington out on this right-hand side. Looking for some movement forward from Ben Seymour. Dyer will have to help it across to Harry Lee. He's not helped Jordan Dyer at all, but Dyer has done so well to bring that back down. But then it's a loose ball forward once again, and West Ham are back on the ball. West Ham have been first at every single ball and it's another example of that as Callum Rowe is late to Dan Chesters who has been excellent since coming on. He's, he's shown some fire, he's shown some quality as you said and well got the assist as well for Thierry Neves. Yeah, and that I think just shows the, the strength and depth of, of that West Ham sort of under-23 squad. So they, they've got the likes of, of him who can come off the bench and play a huge, huge role in, in getting the result. Ashby on the right-hand side. Another one of those unsung heroes in this West Ham side this evening. Fevrier. Elise, these are names that you might be hearing in the future. It's a beautiful ball by Elise. Into the middle with the ball, with Jordan Dyer as a cross to intercept that. These are names that you will be seeing in the Premier League very soon. Yeah, I mean... There was, again, a show of high-quality stuff there. Once again, it's a defence-splitting ball deep from midfield into the wide channel, but the cross has been turned away by good defending from Jordan Dyer. And Jordan Dyer was recalled from Bath during the early stages of January to feature against Sutton. As Oko Flex tries to add another, as and Callum Rose happy to put that out for another corner. Jordan Dyer... He did have a chance in his in the first team as well. He made a cameo against Sutton when Diabate come off with cramp and he's been since loaned back out to Bath since George Ray and Pierce Sweeney are back from injury. It's that first team experience at non-league that's so crucial as well for these young players. Yeah, I mean, I, I think I sort of mentioned it earlier. That step up from academy football to men's football is a huge step up and, and, and going out on loan when they can is, is hugely beneficial for the, the likes of Jordan Dyer. It was Alfie Pond on that occasion who himself was out on loan at Tiverton to head wide. Um, I think Jordan will probably have seen Czech come in and do a really good job though. So, so he'll be uh, really wanting to replicate what Czech's managed to do in recent weeks. Um, he certainly showed a lot of promise throughout his academy journey. And, um, you know, 
I've heard good things about his loan spells too, so hopefully he can sort of kick on and um, enter sort of Matt Taylor's first team squad on a regular basis more often. One more chance then for West Ham to put the ball into the box. There's a little bundle in the middle. I think that's Alise that's gone down under some sort of fracas with Colin Daniel. Elliot Swallow, who may be the man to have turned the tide on this game. We'll speak about that just after the corner. West Ham are looking to put the ball in. Ben Seymour wins the header at the near post. And Elise will see out for yet another West Ham corner. But how different would the game be if Exeter had the penalty on the stroke of half-time? Yeah, you could say that was a turning point. It might have come at a time when even West Ham were probably still looking as the, mo the most threatening. But, but it's a clear shout for a penalty. And on further look, it, it does look like that Spark's been caught. West Ham deliver the corner. Punched away by Jordan Dyer. It's four added minutes for City to just try and maintain the score as it is. Just need a little bit more energy in the press out as West Ham push the ball wide with Ashby. Now Equa. I think as a youngster, you, you're taught about just using triangles on the pitch, and there was a good evident sort of uh, moment of that there, just playing it around, and, and the Grecians can't get anywhere near them. Atangana does get a toe in on that occasion, and Colin Daniel can send it down the line. There's no red shirt on the end of it. Try as Ben Seymour might. Elisa, who's been solid at the back. Tries to drive West Ham forward once more. Can Jack Sparks create a moment of magic for City to give these fans something to cheer? Callum Rowe. Johnson on the right-hand side. He's got Gabe Billington looking for the ball to feed. He'll have to go back to Callum Rowe, who'll send it all the way back for Jordan Dyer. But this is better ball retention from Exeter, albeit it's only an injury time. But, but this is what the, they should have showed maybe earlier in the game, just not allow West Ham to get near them and, and allow that press to cause them problems. Nigel Atangana was confident in Jordan Dyer's ability to get to the first ball there. Some shouts of handball and the linesman duly agrees. It's another chance, isn't it, to, to get the ball into the box from a set piece. We've had two from that kind of area. Whether they can get the third one right, we'll, we'll see. There's a late sub from West Ham. It's ended a fantastic evening for Thierry Neves. Manages to get himself a goal. An excellent performance from the right winger from West Ham United. And he'll be replaced by Bernardo Rossa for the last couple of seconds. Yep, he managed to score as well in that 3-2 win over the Grecians. So it's not a bad sub either to bring on. Brazilian whose idol is Ronaldinho. Isn't that a blast from the past? <laughs> Taylor and Sparks yet again over this. Sparks goes for goal, gets deflection and out for a corner. Sparks always looked like shooting there. He had a stance of, of yesteryear when you stand up and face a free kick with all your might. Well, as long as you're confident in your own ability, then you've got a chance. All but one City shirt is in the box. Jack Sparks with the in swinger. Couldn't even beat the first man. It's going to be frustrating for Sparks tonight, who's getting his first full 90 minutes since returning from that collarbone injury. Yeah, that will be a huge plus for him. He might not have given the performance on the ball that he wanted, but certainly those minutes will, will help him get back into the first team fold. Fevrier has been very able down this left-hand side tonight. Plays it back. And Elias Swallow puts a whistle to his lips for the final time tonight. Exeter City could have gone into the break 1-0 up after Jack Sparks was supposedly fouled in the area. It was that referee who overturned the decision just moments later. Into the second half and West Ham United went ahead through a fortunate deflection from a free kick by, Ash by Harrison Ashby. 
And then the quality showed with Oko Flex with a wonderful solo effort to put West Ham tuned up and Thierry Neves put the icing on the cake. Derek, what is your final prediction on this game? Well, to be fair, you've got to acknowledge the, the ability of the West Ham team there. I think the better team has won. Um, the Grecians just couldn't produce enough quality in the uh, advanced areas to really sort of test the goalkeepers uh, that West Ham had. But um, ultimately, they were undone by some brilliance um, in, uh, in the West Ham attacking areas. Well, thank you very much for joining me. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. Thank you ever so much for watching on our YouTube stream today and we hope you enjoyed the stream as well. But final score here at St James's Park is Exeter City 0, West Ham United 3.